Hey y'all, I'm Ivy Odom, a test kitchen professional in the Southern Living Test Kitchen, and this is What's Cooking with Southern Living. Nothing quite brings a family together like a delicious spread of food. From layer cakes to casseroles and pimento cheese, these are iconic dishes at every Southern gathering. Speaking of iconic dishes, one of those is cheese straws. They show up at every gathering in the South. I am going to dive into the history and technique of making classic Southern cheese straws today. The very first step in making your own cheese straws is to grate your own cheese. Grating the cheese is essential. You cannot use pre-shredded cheese. Pre-shredded cheese has an anti-caking solution powder on each of the individual shreds, which prevents it from sticking together in the bag that is in the store. Block cheese does not have that anti-caking solution, so it will help incorporate into your batter a lot smoother. So very important to grate your own cheese. This is a 16 ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese. I'm cutting it in half into two eight ounce pieces. It's a little bit more handheld and easier to manipulate. I am going to be grating it on the big holes of this box grater. Your cheese actually works better in this recipe if it is room temperature. It helps prevent it from sticking in your cookie press, which press your cheese straws onto your tray to bake them. The very first recipe ever published for cheese straws that we know of was around 1860 in England, but they didn't really start appearing in cookbooks throughout the South until the early 20th century. Once they started hitting a few cookbooks around the South, there was usually only one recipe for a cheese straw, but then cheese straws took off in popularity kind of after the 1950s when the recipe was in Charleston receipts. And after that, most Southern cookbooks, especially church cookbooks and community cookbooks, had multiple recipes for cheese straws in all of their pages. That is all of my cheese. I'm ready to get everything going in the stand mixer. This is a very basic recipe for cheese straws. So I'm going to blend all of these ingredients together. It is the softened butter, the room temperature shredded cheese that you shredded yourself, paprika, cayenne, and salt. In my opinion, a classic cheese straw is not a classic cheese straw unless it has a slight kick to it. And it's just a little something extra that really complements the cheese really well. Once all of this is blended together very well, you're gonna keep your mixer at about medium, medium low speed, and you're going to gradually add your flour. I like to have my flour kind of pre-measured in a larger bowl and then use a measuring cup to scoop it in and be able to gradually add it. Be sure to scrape down the sides of your bowl and clear out your paddle attachment and then give it another good spin in the mixer just to make sure all of your flour gets incorporated evenly into your dough. There we go. This dough is very stiff. It is like cheesy cookie dough. I could probably eat this dough just like this and the thought of cheesy cookie dough really sounds amazing, but it's even better when they're baked. Okay, a few of the tools that you are going to need to get this recipe done is a cookie press. This particular cookie press comes with a lot of different dies that give you different shapes. You also see cheese straws in the form of cheese wafers. It is the same dough rolled out and put into a log and then sliced like a slice and bake cookie. But you will see them differently all over the South depending on the cook who is making them. The hardest part of this recipe is getting the dough into a cookie press and using the cookie press to pipe our cheese straws onto our tray. You can use a small rubber spatula for this and get as much of the dough down in there as you can. 
One thing I love about cheese straws is that they freeze beautifully. You can make a big batch of these and bake them and then put them in your freezer in an airtight container and then pop them out and reheat them and crisp them in an oven when you're ready to serve them. Or even better, if you're into homemade gift giving, make a big batch of cheese straws and anytime you need a neighbor gift, a teacher gift, a hostess gift, you can pop your cheese straw dough out of the freezer, do the same thing, crisp them up in the oven, and it is a last minute gift that has saved me so many times. If you are used to eating cheese straws in the South, this version is what you associate with the cheese straw. But there is another version that has roots in Italy, but the difference is the Italian cheese straws are typically made with puff pastry that has been twisted into a long straw and then either Parmesan cheese is sprinkled on top of the puff pastry or cheese is incorporated into the dough as it is being made, but totally different than this one that we are making. Once you get all of your dough into your cookie press, you are ready to pipe it out into long straws. Sometimes since the dough is so stiff, it tends to coil up as you press it, in which case you can very carefully uncoil it and then you wanna snip them to about two to three inch pieces. They will kind of naturally break off, which is totally normal. Just get them as long as you can. The good thing about cheese straw dough is it's very forgiving. You can carefully maneuver it into long straws. If some breaks off like this, you can kind of put it back in your dough. They don't spread out very much in the oven as they bake, so you can really kind of crowd them on your tray to bake a lot of them at one time. The great thing about this is that it freezes beautifully, so I'm gonna pipe enough for this, save the rest of my dough, chill it in the freezer, it'll last for a few months, and then I will have it ready to go for the next time I want to make cheese straws. Now that my cheese straws are cut into finger food size pieces, they are ready to bake in a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes, keeping on checking them. You just want them to be set and slightly golden brown, not any darker than golden brown or they'll be too crisp. While they are baking in the oven, I am going to look at the What's Cooking with Southern Living Facebook group. Barbara Earl says, I have made at least 100 dozen cheese straws since Thanksgiving, and I make them throughout the year. A few tips, use plain flour, not self-rising. You want them to be crispy, so they don't include any leavening ingredients in them, so all-purpose or plain flour is the way to go. I use the old-timey mirror cookie press with the star-shaped disc. If you have one of these old-timey antique cookie presses, don't ever get rid of them. They are so much better than the modern cookie presses, a lot easier to use and create that classic cheese straw shape that we know and love. All right, let's check on these cheese straws. They are perfect. So they are just set very lightly golden brown on the bottom, but really didn't take on any color on the top. I love a hot cheese straw right out of the oven, so I'm so tempted to grab them. I'm gonna let them cool on the tray for about five minutes and then transfer them to this platter. Platters are the traditional way to serve them at most Southern gatherings, but I also love to see them kind of even in their long form shape. So before cutting them into finger size pieces, they're really actually straws and you can serve them kind of standing up in a cup with parchment paper. There we go. This is a picture perfect presentation for any Southern gathering. This iconic dish is not to be missed. So without further ado, mm, not too spicy. I would even add a little bit more kick than this recipe calls for, but so cheesy, so addicting, and so delightful.